Hello, you are watching It All Starts With A Dream talk show and I am your host, Alka Karpova. Once again, we will talk about dreams today. Dreams come true. Action is needed in order to succeed, but most dreams are reachable. In our talk show, entrepreneurs and professionals talk about their dreams, share their life experiences, incredible stories and secrets of success. You can watch the previous episodes of our show at itallstartswithadream.net. Today we will talk about reaching her dream in art, in special kind of art, fine art and wearable art on silk. I am happy to introduce to you our special guest, incredible, amazing artist Natasha Foucault. And we will talk about her dreams and her wonderful art on silk. Also, in the studio are my helpers, Kristina Karevsky karpova our little star, Rosemary Elementary School, Kindergarten. Hello, how are you? Sofia Yetka, our young generation, Westmont High School. Hello. Natasha, we have a tradition here. Kristina usually starts the interview. She prepared a wonderful question for you. Kristina, go ahead, ask your question, honey. What was your childhood dream? My childhood dream was to be an artist, and I became an artist, and uh, I'm very happy that my dream came true. Natasha, I believe that childhood dreams are related to what we do in adult life. Is that true for you? For me, it's uh, absolutely true. Would you say that your art path started at young age? It started not maybe very young. I was about 11 when I realized that I really need to draw and paint every day and uh, beginning from that age I was I, I can say I was pretty obsessed with it I was doing it every day being a child you probably did a lot of art projects can you talk about it a little bit more in the very beginning I actually talked to my mom yesterday and she reminded me what uh, what I was doing as a child I was do I was fascinated with medical theme I was doing you know, two figures. It was usually one was a doctor and one was a nurse. <laughs> and she said it was always clear who is who. Uh, but then uh, a little later, at around age 12, I, I started to see things around me, beautiful things. And I was very excited that I'm able to see it. And uh, my dream was to be able to paint it and to make other people see the beauty around us. Tell us a little bit more about your childhood. Where did you grow up and um, did you have a big family? I had a small family. I was the only child and uh, I was born and grew up in Moscow, Russia. And um, my parents were very supportive. Uh, were your parents artists or maybe some other relatives were artists? Uh, none of my relatives uh, uh, did anything in art world. Uh, they actually all were, all were chemists. And uh, I guess in the beginning they were thinking maybe she will be a chemist. And I had some ideas about that, but I was a little pyromaniac. I liked to burn <laughs> stuff at home. So uh, when I asked them to buy me the set, it was a set, Young Chemist. And they said, no, no, better not. <laughs> so that, that was over with. And then later when they say, why, why didn't you go to chemical? Because they both, my parents graduated, my grandfather worked as a dean of um, Moscow Chemical College. I said, see, you didn't buy me that set. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been a chemist, but I'm, I'm so glad that, you know, I never... So you chose art part. Who influenced you the most in this? Um, I can say that, um, hmm, I sh well, I guess it was a girl in the school who was a good artist and she was, uh, we were sitting at the same desk and I was fascinated with what she was doing. And then uh, all of a sudden I got the best award that was a school show, art show. And I thought, oh my God, I, I can do something. And, and then I asked my parents, can I, can I go to like art school? Because I, I was a swimmer as a, as a child of around 12 and I was pretty good at swimming. And uh, my uh, coach came to my parents and asked, could, could you send her to Olympic team? Wow. And uh, I was very flattered and my parents asked, you know, would you go? And then I, I thought seriously about it because I, I had to go every day 
to this to the pool and I decided no no I really want to do art and then I asked them to find art school and they found really good art school for me it's actually a big honor to become a uh, Olympic team kind of member so but you chose art. I did because you know it was I guess even at the young age it was giving me so much happiness it was like I, I, I can say it was feeding my soul how did you get interested in silk painting in variable art? That came later. Uh, so I, gradu I, I came to the first uh, graduated um, art school for children in Moscow, and then I graduated uh, pedagogical Moscow Pedagogical Institute art department. And we had uh, one semester of silk painting. So I found out about it, but I did a lot of different things. Uh, I did etchings, I did ceramic. Uh, and I wanted to succeed, uh, and for that you have to do something seriously and concentrate on one medium. So what happened to me was kind of a little strange story. I got very sick, actually. Uh, I was uh, infected through the needle. Um, I lived in Russia, so. Uh, with hepatitis B and spent four months in the hospital and after that, they said, you can't even come close to ceramic etchings, oil painting, because of the heavy metals and, uh, you know, poisonous materials. So I, I chosen, at that point, I chosen the safest media, but then I discovered that it's amazing media and I can do pretty much everything in it. So that's how it happened. Okay. So Sophia has a couple questions for you as well. So Sophia, go ahead. Ask I'm a, a high school student right now, and it's the time for me to think about my future. And when you were in high school, what did you think about your future? Um, when I was in high school, I knew that I want to go to art college. And uh, it was very competitive. It was hard to get in the art college. So I was taking um, classes, separate classes. I was um, going to this art, art school for children, and I had the tutor because I had to pass the exam. So I was very concentrated but I guess it's never late if you know what you want to do you can start at any point but uh, yes you have to start preparing yourself for your mm -hmm. college. What gives you, what gives you in inspiration? Where do you get it from? Inspiration uh, for me you know it's everywhere I, I like the nature I like uh, cityscapes landscapes still lives and I travel a lot and I travel with a camera so when I see something I photograph it Natasha, you mentioned something about your degree. Can you tell a little bit more, maybe the most interesting memories of your student life or something? Um, my student life was very exciting. Uh, you know, it was a group of people who um, were all artists and uh, we had a lot in common. We traveled a lot together. Um, my earliest memory was an art school, a children art school. Uh, we went to Suzdal. Suzdal is a gorgeous place uh, north from Moscow and it has 300 churches and five monasteries oh, wow. it's amazing it's a fairy tale we didn't tell adults <laughs> 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 we were about 14 uh, it was a group like 10 of us and we just brought our painting supplies got on a train we didn't know where we we're gonna spend the night it was rainy. Risky. It was risky, yeah. <laughs> we found a place, we asked local people what's a good spot to put tents. We brought tents with us. And um, we woke up in this amazingly beautiful place on the river, bank of the river, Nerl, with a beautiful Kidiksha church. I, I still remember how we, we all were amazed by, by all this beauty. We painted for three days there, slept in tents, got wet, completely soaked, it was raining. <laughs> But this trip is my favorite. I actually describe that trip in my book. Your book? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's right here. Okay. Yes, that Do was you want to talk about this a little bit? Sure. Um, this book um, I wrote um, with co-author Jean-Michel Salander. It was a very interesting uh, project. Uh, it's kind of um, three in one. It's art book. Um, autobiography book and techniques. It's all in there. This is actually a place where we put the tents right around this church. <laughs> it's a beautiful place. <laughs> and uh, um, I described my techniques. So um, like I said, I already been uh, an artist and I had my style. 
when uh, I became sick. So uh, I started to develop different techniques in silk, how to paint glass, how to paint reflections. This is, uh, by the way, one of my paintings. And you can see that I'm very uh, interested in glass and reflections. Pretty much all my paintings have water in some form. So, and in this book, there's techniques how to do it on silk. So this, uh, I'm very happy that it happened. It was a, a silk painting retreat for um, South Bay uh, Silk Artist Guild. And I was telling them stories. I usually have a slideshow and talk about how the paintings were done. But we had plenty of time. I told them stories. And uh, they said, you have to write a book. It's a book. And they said, I'd love to write a book, but I'm not a writer. And English is not my na native language. And one woman in that group said, I want to write that book. And she did. Well, congratulations we did on that, because I think to write a book, it's a lot of work. And you've done it. Yes. So I'm now you happy. have it. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> good. That's good. Yeah. Beautiful book. Let's put it right here. Yeah. Well, my next question is, like, I noticed that you like to travel in your art. Um, you have a lot of paintings showing Venus. Can you comment on that, please? I love Italy. I, I think I've been there already maybe six times. And uh, of course, Venice is one of my favorite. I already mentioned that I love water. And that is the place where you see water and reflections everywhere. Uh, and when I am in Venice, I wake up uh, at 4 <laughs> in the morning. It actually goes for every place I go. I like to catch the essence of the city of the town when there's no people yet. And it, it, for Venice, it works the best because Venice is extremely popular. So I can catch it without people and without boats or reflections are still. It's like glass. You know, you, you look at the reflection and this beautiful architecture right there in the water. So it inspires me. Can you talk a little bit more about fine art of yours? Um, so I have two pieces here in the studio. This one is uh, still live, uh, the view from my window. And um, the one on the bottom is one of the uh, cityscapes, San Francisco, Fort, uh, Fort Mason, Sunset in Fort Mason. Uh, when I travel, I take photographs, and then I try to remember what I saw when I, you know, when I saw over my pictures and I try to find um, something which struck me some feeling for that place and then um, I do the sometimes it's just uh, imaginary scenes but mostly my fine art is uh, based on real thing because I think we can't do anything more beautiful that is already the, there, Exist. created by nature or it people. Already exists, right. yeah. I have a um, lizard piece on the photograph, that image that we will show for our audience. Can you talk a little bit about this piece, lizard, lizard piece? Right. Uh, this piece, uh, it was inspired uh, by the um, photograph I took at, uh, it was in Hawaii. It was uh, Kauai, island of Kauai. I just saw this incredible seen the lizard climbing on bird of paradise flower and I caught her that was so happy that I have her in the picture <laughs> and uh, she was like blend in it's, it's hard to see her right it's hard to see her on that flower so I I just try to repeat it as close as possible to what I saw okay mm -hmm. my next question is like um, you create such a beautiful wearable art can you talk a little bit more about that Mm, I started working on uh, wearable art back in Moscow in Russia and the reason why I wanted to do it is because uh, it was very hard to find interesting clothes or different clothes. Uh, as, as children we were wearing brown uniform, can you believe it, <laughs> Sophia? Brown <laughs> uniform? Brown, yes, yeah. it was deadly. So I wanted something bright, I wanted something beautiful and it was hard to come up with um, materials for su with supplies for that. So uh, my first dress was, uh, it was St. Vitus Cathedral from Prague. And I found fishing net and I colored it black and I you know, made the top from fishing net and the bottom was this 
stained glass uh, from uh, from the church and um, everybody asked me and I was very excited about it and when I came to America 25 years ago I found a lot of interest in it so I widen you know this I, I make dresses coats ponchos capes and actually here in the studio <laughs> 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 we all dressed up for you guys so yeah. uh, it's a pleasure actually to have yes. this beautiful outfit. Alec is wearing the cape and, and this Sophia is inspired and by even Dali. Christina. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> Sophia wearing a uh, Venice piece with gondolas and uh, lamps and uh, Christina wearing a piece inspired by Klimt. I, in my wearable art I, I find inspiration everywhere. It can be a cityscape, it can be one of my favorite contemporary artists like this piece inspired uh, by Miro, Juan Miro. I'm curious, uh, many artists create paintings, but not so many work with silk. Am I mistaken or is it like, how, how often do you see other artists doing what you're doing? Like Actually, it, yeah, it's a very good question. It is very new media for America. It's ma it came to, um, the history is very interesting. It came from Russia actually. I read it in the book here. I didn't know back in Russia. Uh, in um, about the uh, 1917, when the court, Tsar's court, immigrated to France, they brought this technique. And in Russia, they, called it, they call it cold batik. Here it's just painting on silk. And in France, they called it peinture sur soie. And uh, French women came to America uh, in uh, about 1960 and taught the first workshop on silk. And from that point on, there were, you know, few artists in America. And now we have Silk Painters International Congress. Uh, we get together every two years. So people actually from all over the world, but mainly from U.S. who are interested in painting on silk. So I would say it's pretty new media for America. Can you tell a little bit more about technique? Like, it's interesting, like, how it's done. How it's done. Yeah. 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 Um, it does look like watercolor, but technically it's very different. Uh, the paint, it's a silk dyes, the liquid silk dyes, they spread. So once you touch the silk with, this, with the silk dye, it will go everywhere. So you have to uh, make a borders. And that's where I use, I can show you here, I, get, I use this gutta lines. See the white lines? Mm -hmm. It's like a glue. It's a, you outline. And there's many different ways you can do it, but basically you have to contain the color in a certain shape. Okay. And then it's it's done with the brush on white silk. Can you wash with clothes? Oh yes, <laughs> you can wash it. It has to be steamed though. It's a special way of setting the, the dyes to silk. So after steaming, you can wash it and you can wash even the paintings. So they're very durable. They look, uh, you know, fragile, but they very, they last for a long time. Uh, where did you learn it? <laughs> uh, well, I learned it in Russia. Most of it I learned in Russia. I met the woman, she was 90 then, so she might have been in that very beginning of silk painting in Russia. And uh, I learned some from her, and then I lived in France for a little bit, and uh, it was very big in France. They had even like sets where they had pre-gooded, you know, with resist already on silk sets.